computer. So thanks very much, Professor Alt, for, for answering some questions um, with regard to COVID-19 and um, ACC. Um, so I'm just going to fire some questions at you and uh, we look forward to hearing what you have to say. Um, under what circumstances would people with ACC have a greater risk of contracting coronavirus? So many thanks. Um, yeah, it's important to think about this. And I think that patients with ACC have a greater risk of contracting coronavirus. Yeah, if they um, are currently undergoing or have recently undergone chemotherapy, or if they have very recently undergone surgery. Yeah. And also patients who are receiving mitotain treatment and have obviously together with this um, um, hydrocortisone tablets um, to cover their adrenal insufficiency. Um, and obviously um, it is important to say that all patients who are on the vulnerable list of the government, yeah, patients over the age of 70, patients who under, um, uh, receive immunosuppressive treatment for any other causes, um, obviously um, are also at a higher risk. And obviously you could have both. You could have ACC and, and be still over 70 years of age. And that means that puts you at an even higher risk. And what about somebody who might have gone through surgery recently? Um, I think that all the patients who are at increased risk, um, which we just went through in the group of patients who have ACC, they should, like currently all, other in, uh, all others in the population, uh, really adhere to stringent social distancing. Yeah? That's really important. Yeah? The um, government has defined people who are considered vulnerable and who shouldn't leave the house now starting yesterday for 12 weeks. And I think I would definitely recommend this to the ACC patients that we have just listed. Okay. Um, so why would someone with ACC need to be hospitalized with coronavirus? This is very similar to any patient with corona. Yeah. So in the first instance, most patients have um, hopefully um, a mild cause of disease. So um, if you feel not too unwell, so that means uh, if you do not have severe difficulties breathing, or if you have um, significant diarrhea or vomiting, which would prevent you from keeping your hydrocortisone tablets down, you should be able to manage at home. Yeah? So it is usually said that um, after about five days into the infection, things should turn for the better. But if they take for a turn for the worse and you don't uh, um, start to feel better and are significantly impacted, then one has to think carefully whether to go to hospital. In the current situation, you should only go to hospital if, as I said, you have difficulties breathing. Yeah? And uh, understandably, this difficulty is, is something that you persistently notice all day and not just when you feel very anxious. And um, also, if you think that you cannot keep your hydrocortisone tablets down, it is very important to say, because many patients with ACC are on mitotain and hydrocortisone, because the mitotain obviously causes adrenal insufficiency, um, you should, like always, in the situation that you catch coronavirus and you are uh, ill, you should stop mitotain, yeah? Because the recommendation is you should not take mitotain when you are significantly ill or undergo surgery. This will not impact negatively your mitotain blood levels, yeah? Um, most likely they will not go down much if you stop mitotain for one or two weeks. But um, obviously you need to continue your, your hydrocortisone, but as per sick day rules, you should really at least double hydrocortisone. We actually had some discussions at the Society for Endocrinology Clinical Committee about this, and some patients have very uh, severe fever and feel very awful over a prolonged period of time. And we just agreed um, that we would recommend um, that patients who feel really very ill and have high fever, 
um, that in addition to drinking lots of fluid, which is the most important measure, they should also increase their hydrocortisone to a major stress dose level. So they should take 50 milligrams, five zero milligrams hydrocortisone every six hours. Yeah. And obviously they should be in touch with their GP to ensure that they receive an increased dose of hydrocortisone in these circumstances. Yeah. Perfect, thank you. Um, so do we yet have any data on how ACC patients have been coping with COVID-19? Unfortunately, we do not have any data yet. Yeah. So we all think that obviously patients who have immunosuppression of all kinds of different reasons, yeah, including all those that have been listed by the government as vulnerable, um, that they are at higher risk for one, catching COVID-19, and also at potentially at a higher risk to have a severe cause of COVID-19. Yeah, but so far, no data have yet emerged to confirm this. Yeah, neither from China nor from Italy. But obviously this is understandable because they are just very busy to look after the acutely ill patients. So um, the researchers haven't caught up yet with these data. But actually in the UK, it is a very concerted effort to absolutely record all other conditions, health conditions patients suffer from that are admitted to hospital. So we will certainly um, have emerging data on this. And as we discussed before we started, I'm very keen that um, patients with ACC um, download the ZOE app. Yeah, which is an NIHR uh, supported trial. The, every UK citizen can, or every UK resident, you don't need to be a citizen, um, can download this and you can then enter how you feel every day. If many um, people do this, this will help us to show, is for one, to identify early signs of COVID-19 and also it will help us a lot to find out of people with, if people with pre-existing health conditions are more likely to catch COVID-19 or to suffer more severely from it. Yeah, because in the app you will be asked about your pre-existing health conditions. Great, thank you. Uh, I suspect the next, the next question will be slightly repetitive again maybe, but um, is there any other specific advice that you would deem essential for ACC patients to have to um, promote or manage self-care? What should they be um, alert to? I think they should, um, um, it is good to be repetitive because I think it is important that they um, adhere to social distancing and that obviously the people who live with them and support them also adhere to stringent social distancing. You know that you can, as a family unit, do all the things you want together if nobody shows um, signs of disease, but you should not have any contact with anybody else outside. You should absolutely take care that when you come back home, you leave your shoes outside the living area and that you wash your hands thoroughly when you come back from anywhere, like shopping or taking a walk before you touch anything inside. This is really important. You should continue to take your regular medication and not drop anything. Yeah, as I said, um, if you um, become ill, and uh, obviously we don't know if you become ill if it's COVID-19, it could be also something else, but then it would still apply what I say, you stop mitotain until you recover again, and you would increase your hydrocortisone. Initially, as per sick day rule, double it, but if you feel very, very ill and have continued fever, I would think you should increase it to 50 milligrams four times a day as in tablet form. If you then become even more ill, then you need to call 111 and discuss with them and possibly self-inject or some family member um, can self-inject you with your hydrocortisone emergency injection while you evade the ambulance. Yeah, but hopefully this will only be the case for a really minor proportion of the patients. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so other things that uh, patients have been asking me, what about my follow-up imaging? Yeah, because many patients, for example, had successful surgery for ACC, but it is not that long ago. And usually in the first two years after successful surgery, we would undertake a CT every three months yeah, to um, ensure that the tumor is not coming back. 
under the current circumstances, many patients who had a uh, follow-up imaging scheduled um, actually have had their imaging cancelled. Yeah? And this is because it's currently um, um, not recommendable to go to hospital for any procedure unless you have to. Yeah? And usually it should only be for a life-threatening emergency or if you have COVID-19 and have a severe cause of disease. Yeah, so um, we will be um, looking what to do if this situation lasts longer. Yeah, as uh, you may know, our group has developed a urine test, and um, we will see if this could be offered in the meantime until imaging is more accessible. But many uh, hospitals have also organized that patients can go to one hospital for imaging and surgery other than COVID-related uh, diseases while one major hospital is responsible for the COVID-19 diseases. Our local health authorities um, have organized things like this. So we don't need to worry that there will not be any imaging over a very prolonged period of time. Yeah. And um, obviously um, some ACC patients may be affected who currently undergo chemotherapy. Yeah. Um, so um, I know that some have had discussions with their oncologist if under the current circumstances it is a good idea to continue chemotherapy or whether it is safer to pause it. Yeah, These patients should still consider them obviously immune suppressed and should take great care and stay at home. Yeah, But it might be a better idea to pause chemotherapy temporarily even if a cycle had been planned and to return to it when we have come over the worst um, in, with regard to the COVID-19 infections. Because if you develop any complication of chemotherapy, or if you um, have to go to hospital for your chemotherapy, then you have an increased risk to encounter patients or staff that have uh, been infected with COVID-19 without knowing it. So this is to be avoided in this situation. Mm. Okay, great, thanks. Um, and one uh, very specific question that has been uh, posed by one of the patients um, is, given that ACC patients are immunosuppressed in one way or another, are there any indications thus far that they may be less susceptible to an overly aggressive immune response, making them less likely to develop severe COVID-19? Okay, so we have to differentiate two things here. Yeah? So for one, if your immune system doesn't function very well, then you have a higher likelihood to catch COVID-19. And we would also assume that you have a higher likelihood to develop a severe cause. Yeah? But obviously, uh, the overwhelming majority of patients with ACC will not be as immune suppressed, for example, as a patient who recently underwent um, a bone marrow transplant or similar. Yeah? And, um, but it has also been discussed that patients who have a particularly severe cause of disease, who are on intensive care, that they have something that we call a cytokine storm, where like proteins are circulating in the blood that enhance inflammation and that could overcome the body. And some people have suggested that if you take drugs or you have conditions that suppress your ability to um, produce these cytokines, um, perhaps you have then a better cause. But so far, we have actually no indication because there's no published experience if this is really the case. So in principle, this is currently just a theoretical consideration. And I would in general really advise to avoid to be infected and to be cautious as we discussed when you are infected. Thank you so much. Um, I know times are, are really, really busy at the moment in the NHS, so I know that I can speak on behalf of all the ACC patients who we're in contact with, um, that uh, we're all very grateful for your time. Thanks so much. Many thanks, Joe.